Uh, okay, thank you for invitation. Um, I'm very happy to be um, here. Um, so this is my first visit to IHES. So today I'm talking about several things, some relation between topological recursion and WKB final equations. And uh, mainly I wanted to discuss some research and property. Um, so let me start by saying something about the topological recursion. Um, So this was introduced by Einar and Lantern. Um, so actually, it is some kind of um, recursive algorithms which gives you some um, analog of correlators and free energies in matrix model. So basically, so it has some input and output. So here, input is a so-called spectral curve, so which is a triplet for C and X and Y. Vectoral curve. Here, uh, this C is a um, compact Riemann surface. And if this is, uh, this has some genus greater than or equal to one, so this must have some Torelli marking. So we have to choose some A cycle and B cycle Torelli marking. And this X and Y are some meromorphic functions. On C. And this must satisfy some condition. So dx and dy never vanish simultaneously. Um, okay. So for given such data, so topological recursion gives you some. Um, so l let me write TR for short. Um, output, a uh, so called correlator and free energy. Sorry, free energy. And uh, it is denoted by omega gn, d1 to dn. So it's a um, meromorphic, meromorphic multi differential. On c to the power n. Uh, it's a kind of section, meromorphic section of certain line bundle on the product of this space, which is obtained by bringing back to the usual uh, cotangent bundle to of this each component. <coughs> so locally, it is some meromorphic function times dz1 to dzn. So this is a marriage differential. And not only that, this also con uh, assign some complex number. And the first one is called correlator, and the second one is called free energy. Um, so actually, so today, I'm not using the explicit formula, but I'm writing the formula in advance. So this is the formula of the topological recursion. Um, so it looks complicated, but uh, anyway, so, so this is, I just write this formula for uh, audience who do not know about the topological recursion. But uh, so this recursion relation is basically um, obtained by some rec recursion structure uh, appearing in a asymptotic analysis of the matrix integral. So this sometimes com computes some enumerative geometry invariant, which I will explain later. Um, okay. But okay, so main, main question I want to discuss today is the following. So question is, uh, so what is the resurgence property? of topological recursion, free energy, or partition function. So which is usually denoted by Z, <coughs> which is uh, some power C in H bar. And I want to discuss some resurgence property for this small parameter H bar. So it is obtained by the generating series of these free energies. So this is my main question. And today I will propose, um, uh, I will show some rigorous results and some conjectural statements about the resurgence property of it. Okay. And uh, maybe later I will use, so, so the exponent of this, so log of this partition function is also denoted by FH bar. And this is called the total free energy. So yeah, so both of guys are important in the, Anthropological recursion. So these are analog of matrix integral partition functions and the free energies. Um, okay. So let me first give you some explicit example which we can analyze this um, resurgence property explicitly. 
um, so which I call Weber spectral curve. So it contains some parameter nu in some non-zero complex constant. Uh, here, the Weber spectral curve is defined by um, so underlying Riemann surface is genus zero. And uh, our pair of meromorphic functions, so in this case, these are rational functions, are given by um, this explicit form. So this is two. And Z minus Z inverse. And Z is a coordinate on this P1. So actually, so this is a parameterization of the Weber curve, which is defined by this equ equation. So we call this curve, curve as a Weber curve because this is a classical limit of the Elmite Weber equation. And in the context of the matrix model, so this is known as a Gaussian spectral curve. So uh, and to apply the topological recursion, so maybe I forgot to mention. So in the definition, so we have to take some residue at some points R, and R is uh, zero of the dx. So namely, so it's a critical point of this x. Um, and in this case, you can easily compute that the ramification point is located at plus or minus one, which is corresponding to the zero of the, um, the pot right hand side, oh sorry, so this, this polynomial part. So it's a ramification point of this um, spectral curve. And uh, here you have also see some sigma of z. So th this one is corresponding to the local covering involution around the ramification point. And it is explicitly given by um, one over z in this case. So you have same x coordinate, but y co coordinate is, so y is, uh, y changes its sign. So it is corresponding to the covering involution of, of this um, two to one covering to the x plane. Okay, and if you run the topological recursion for this example, um, then um, so applying the topological recursion for the Weber spectral curve, so what you obtain is um, omega g n and also f g. And in this case, f g is easier to describe. So it is um, given by this explicit series if g is greater than or equal to 2. OK, so this is, sorry, maybe I forgot to mention or write down the definition of fg, sorry. Um, so for g greater than or equal to 2, so fg is defined by summation over our ramification point and by taking the residue. And uh, first, you have to take some primitive of y dx. It's a function, and it's times omega g1. So omega g1 is a differential one form, so you can take some residue. So this is the definition of fg. Uh, maybe I think I have to divide by this new maker factor, but uh, anyway, so this is the definition of fg. And after the computation, you have this explicit expression. And so this part is known as the uh, yeah, Euler characteristic of the modular space of genus g Riemann surfaces by Harald, I guess, Bennett's formula. And also, um, in this case, uh, I'm not going to explain detail, but this is also related to some modular space of um, endpointed uh, genus G Lima surfaces. Okay. So but by this explicit expression, so you can analyze the um, Borel singularities. So in, in this case, so you can see that the Borel transform of our free energy on zeta plane. So, so zeta is a Laplace dual variable or Borel Laplace dual variable to 1 over h bar or h bar. <laughs> Maybe I should see. Mm. Okay, so it's a variable on the Borel plane. Um, uh, actually, so I, I'm not omit, sorry, I'm not going to ex write down the explicit form, but using the um, definition of the Bernoulli number, so you can compute the Borel transform explicitly. And it's, so this has a um, singular point at um, zeta equal to pi i nu times k, and k is learning all integers. So you have some periodic singularities on the Borel plane. So, um, so this means that, so this is, um, so f is not um, Borel summable. Uh, when this Borel singularity lies on the positive real axis where, on which you want to take the Laplace transform to define the Borel sum. And the, uh, the condition for nu is, uh, is given by the real part of nu equals zero. 
So this is a non-borrelous normal condition. And if this is satisfies them, you have some bunch of singularities on the positive real axis, and you can discuss the um, Stokes phenomena. So actually, the action of the Stokes automorphism, um, sorry, no. so which is closely related to, to Stokes isomorphism in the Teubelmann's talk. So you can compare the Laplace transform in the below and above, and uh, look at the um, jump of this partition function, then you can uh, see that so in this case, so you have an original partition function times. Um, so anyway, so, so the correction term is computed by the residue calculus at this point, and the result is the following, so which also appeared in a, a lot test talk yesterday. So you have some exponential dialogue appear that the one factor and the other factor is written by um, this new over h bar. So this is the resulting formula. And actually, so this was computed by Pasquetti and Sieppa and many other people, including Alim and uh, his collaborators. So they are lot I mentioned yesterday. OK, so but by from this express expression, so we can analyze the resurgence structure, but in general, it is difficult to understand the resurgence structure of this kind of Stokes jump. So uh, what I want to propose or um, emphasize is, so for example, so, so this kind of Borel singularity is closely related to some period on a spectral curve. So this becomes transparent when we discuss some relation between topological recursion and WKB. So from now, I want to discuss uh, um, some WKB. So mainly, so t my main uh, goal is to analyze the resurgence structure by, um, by uh, using some relation between topological recursion and the WKB. So one advantage of the direction is that we may use some um, several knowledge on the special functions. OK, let me explain about the WKB. So WKB analysis is very closely related to the exponential integral. Um, so today I'll focus on the second order linear ordinary differential equation of this kind of this form. So which is nothing but a Schrodinger type of equation. And h by is appearing here and Qx is a rational function. So we are considering some meromorphic ordinary differential equation defined on P1. And once you have this um, Schrodinger type of equation, so first you can construct the um, formal WKB solution by putting some ansatz. Um, oops. Psi of x h bar. So it's a WKB solution is defined as a, some power series solution formal power series solution of this form. And here S is assumed to have some h by expansion starting from 1 over h bar. And coefficients are function of x. And if, if you plug it in a Schrodinger equation, you will have some recursion relation, sequence of some relation uh, of SM. And in particular, if you set y as a S minus 1x, so which is the leading term of this S, so this satisfies the algebraic equation, which I did, uh, maybe I should say qx equals 0. So this is nothing but the classical limit of our Schrodinger equation. And actually, higher order coefficients are recursively determined by this relation. Um, so again, so explicit form is not important in this talk, but um, I'm writing this formula to show you some similarity between WKB recursion and topological recursion. Anyway, so, so this recursion relation determines the higher order term in the WKB solution. Uh, sorry, my notation is a primitive of S, sorry. So usually integral of this one should be S, and usually this is denoted P. 
Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so this is one form in the spectra. Yeah, so actually, so this information is related to omega-0-1 in the topological regression and the higher order coefficients are, uh, yeah, so similarly defined. Okay, and not only that, we also, um, we are also interested in the Boros coefficient, so which also appeared in a lot of talk yesterday. So actually, so, um, so this is cross very important quantity. Sometimes it's called, called quantum period, or all order Boros-Mafeld period. So it is simply defined by the period integral of S along some cycles on a spectral curve. Okay. Again, so S is a one form. Here, gamma is either um, fast homology of our spectral curve, or uh, so we can consider some different version uh, or relative homology version by considering some relative homology for fast compactify sigma, adding some pole, uh, pole, sorry, poles of QX uh, is uh, some punctures. So we can add it by compactification and the pole divisor. So we can consider some path uh, which can have an end point in this pole divisor. So maybe I, I should show you some example. Oh, sorry. Sorry, still I don't know what, what is the best order to use blackboard. Okay, so let me explain by showing some example. Example, uh, my second example, or first example in WKB is a Weber equation. Um, so I should say, so the, it's a Schrodinger equation with this um, potential, which is a quadratic polynomial in X. And correspond, uh, uh, and in that case, so classical limit is nothing but the, uh, oh, I erased, um, but it's classical limit is nothing but the Weber equation. And in the case, so on X frames, so you have, uh, and I, I assume that nu is again non zero complex number, then you have some plus or minus two times square root of nu as a ramification point or a turning point in WKB terminology. And the spectral curve is defined as uh, some double cover. And to visualize some path or cycle on a double cover, so usually we draw some branch cut. And in the case, so you have um, one closed cycle gamma. And actually, so this is, can be regarded as some residue cycle at infinity. And also, we can discuss, or we can consider the relative homology, so which is uh, coming from some infinity minus on the, some second seat and going to the infinity plus on the first seat. And I denote it by gamma check. So they are dual with respect to the intersection pairing. Okay. And for these uh, cycles, um, the Boros coefficient for closed cycle version is just uh, obtained by this one. So again, um, so this is obtained by some, this can be shown by some residue calculus. As I said, so this gamma is a residue cycle at infinity, so it is easy to derive. But on the other hand, so this one is non-trivial. So actually, so this is, uh, but I forgot to mention, uh, okay. So since infinity plus and minus are some pole of YDX, for example, so you have to, so when we discuss the uh, integral along such a relative homology, so we, we have to be careful. So sometimes we have to subtract some singular terms or we have to consider some regularization. But the module such technical detail, so you can obtain this expression. Um, relate expression. So actually, so this is very closely related to the talk of Maxim yesterday. Um, 2m minus 1. So actually, so this is a starting series. And you can, again, do the similar game. So it has some Borel singularities um, at the same point. Okay. And you can discuss some jump of the, um, <coughs> jump of the Stokes uh, automorph, uh, sorry, Boros coefficient. Okay. So from this, ex from this, uh, examples in topological regression of WKB. So maybe you are now beginning to 
uh, understand or uh, uh, expect that there is a relation between WKB and topological recursion. And this is what I want to talk next. And actually, so, so this similarity helps us to understand the resurgence structure because um, we know some many about the resurgence structure in rank to Schrodinger equations. So uh, by the work of Boros and many other researchers, so we may um, use several techniques in the WKB to understand the topological research. So let me summarize some facts. Facts. Um, so first of all, our um, topological recursion is closely related to um, WKB recursion. So actually, so topological recursion can be regarded as one way to quantize the spectral curve. Um, so for example, as I said, so so the input of the Weber spectral curve is the, um, the classical limit of the Weber equation. And actually, so the topological recursion is closely related to the recursion relation, so which determines the uh, higher order coefficient of the WKB solutions. And also, so actually, so we can write down some explicit relation. Um, but um, anyway, so, uh, and also this business is usually called a quantum curve because topological, as I said, so Topological recursion is a, gives some one way to um, quantize the spectral curve. I have a question. Okay. Actually, I don't understand this statement, which I keep hearing. You take mm -hmm. a take a mirror curve mm -hmm. and compute topological recursion. We know that this is going to give you a topological string partition function, okay? Mm -hmm. In the standard topological string partition, the WKB gives you the Negrasso Satasvili limit. This yes, yes, yes. This is what I want to mention now. So there is a caution or remark. <laughs> so caution. So in general, yeah, uh, so thank you for pointing, yeah. In general, so our topological recursion quantum curve is not same as the uh, Negrasso Shatashibiri quantum curve, so which was discussed by Lotta yesterday. Mm. And actually, um, so in particular, so for example, if spectral curve has genus greater than or equal to one, then these two are totally different. But in genus zero situation, so these are maybe accidentally or there is some reason. So we can, so for example, we can show that topological recursion quantum curve or the Weber spectral curve is nothing but the Hermite Weber equation. And in general, so we have to add some H bar collection term to the Schrodinger equation to compare these two. Okay, so do you agree with? Yes, but then this means that the topological recursion applied to say the, the mirror curve of a Calabillao is not going to give you the topological string partition function, right? is going to give you WKB. You change the curve to obtain WKB. Um, right? Um, sorry, I didn't get so, so, so if you change the curve, you have each bar corrections, then the topological recursion applied to this quantum corrected curve will reproduce WKB. Sorry, what, what do you mean by topological recursion for quantum corrected curve? I mean, what I mean is that, what I mean is that, um, you know, if you, is, yeah, if topological string is not necrosis of task right? Mm -hmm. This we agree. Yeah. Now, uh, how are you going to obtain then, you know, the standard topological string partition function from, from your from your procedure? Um, okay, maybe it is related to my second part of um, so I mean so um, so in relation to the topological story, so what I know I understand is so it is related to the so called omega background parameters. So in this case so you have some epsilon one and epsilon two. It's um, given by H bar and minus H bar. So this is uh, usual setting. And Necrasso Shatashibiri is corresponding to this limit. So yeah. Um, so anyway, so, so this may be different. Sorry, still, maybe I, I don't understand the point, but maybe we can discuss later. But at least. Uh, can I ask a question? Oh, sorry, before you do the question, like, what are you questioning us about? Like, what's the statement? Sorry? What is the statement that you're Cautioning against. It's not, I don't think it's. Ah, ah, no, it's about. Mm, uh, not equal. They. Uh, Nicholas, you don't know. Don't, okay, you don't have to ask. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I'm discussing this part. Um, so, and uh, there is there may be some difference from the talk yesterday by Lotte. 
Uh, anyway, but, but uh, so since there is a similarity, at least in this Weber case, so we can um, look at some Borel singularities. So in the WKB side, so we know some non-Borel summability. is related to um, the existence of the saddle connection in the Stokes graph. So for example, um, fact is the Stokes graph is the same as the uh, spectral networks which Lotte explained yesterday. So in our Weber case, Um, and say new equal one, for example. So we have to fix some parameter to find, uh, describe the spec, sorry, uh, Stokes graph. Uh, in this case, so we have um, this Stokes graph, so which is, so, so this cross is a uh, uh, turning point towards zero of, of Q. And these lines are obtained by vanishing locus of the imaginary part. Um, coming emanating from each and zero. Okay, so this is a new equal one case, uh, but, but when you choose some different parameter, say new equal i or real part of new equal zero, then you have this um, some degenerate uh, Stokes curve, and this is the called this is called the saddle connection. And actually, the pre previous Borel singularities are related to the period. So, um, so you can check that. So take um, some cycle, which encircles the saddle connection, which I denote by saddle graph. Then um, you can check that gamma saddle or y dx is 2 pi i times nu, so which is one of the um, Borel singularities. And actually, so the appearance of the subtle connection implies that so this must have zero imaginary part. So these points locate on a positive real axis. And actually, so this is related to the non-Borel summability. So from this viewpoint, so we can um, discuss or so we can see that these Borel singularities are coming from this um, subtle connection and the uh, sorry uh, period of this by dx along the subtle connection. So um, okay. And from this point of view, so we can, uh, and not only that, maybe I also have to say the Stokes jump in this case, uh, still I have some um, place. So maybe I can write down the Stokes form jump formula. Mm. Um, okay. For so the first one is convergent, but the second one is divergent, so we can discuss or yeah, analyze the um, Stokes jump. And in this case, so Stokes jump is obtained by this formula. Um, so this is um, so-called dirabare dillinger Farmer's formula, DDP formula, and also known as cluster transformation. Actually, so this is a uh, um, now well-known relation between WKB and the cluster algebra, um, so observed by Gautama to Manaisuke, and also um, myself and Nakanishi. Anyway, so from this, um, so you see, so this one is nothing but exponential of V gamma. Um, so this is uh, also same as uh, Lotte's, uh, the transformation, um, operator, so which, discuss, which appeared in the wall crossing formula. Um, and actually, so here, so thi in this case, so this power of this jump factor is one, and this has also a meaning. So in general, it should be written by uh, some in number times intersection numbers, and both of them are one in this case. And this one is so-called 4D um, BPS uh, invariant. And this one is appearing in the, not appearing in the yesterday talk, but, but when Lotta write down some uh, wall crossing formula, so you have to consider some product of k's, and this BPS number should appear in this um, power of this k. 
And this, uh, in this WKB context, so this is in understood as some weighted counting number of the saddle connections. Okay. But as I said, so in general, so this um, so topological recursion quantization and Nicholas Shatashibiri quantization so are different, but um, there is some class uh, where uh, so both of them are essentially the same. So this is um, I observed with Omakiroi. So let me explain some results. Okay. Theorem. I kilo y. Um, oh sorry, maybe. And also, myself and Satya Koike and Yumiko Takei. 18. Um, so, first of all, um, I'm not writing the explicit form, but there is a formula uh, which is relating. Ah, sorry, maybe I forgot to write down some assumptions or, um, sorry, for um, hypergeometric type spectral curves, so which is obtained by some classical limit of the hypergeometric ordinary differential equations, so which is always written as this form. Yeah, maybe I should write some example. Okay. So the hypergeometric, the most general one is um, contains some three parameters. So because the hypergeometric ordinary differential equation contains some three parameters, alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, so this is uh, um, some spectral curve obtained by classical limit of the hy Gauss hypergeometric equation. And the other hypergeometric type spectral curves in, in this uh, paper, uh, so we discuss uh, um, so the, we discuss some spectral curves obtained by some confluence limit of the hypergeometric differential equations. So for, for example, you can um, collide some poles and pole and zeros and so on. So we have in total so eight um, examples of the, this kind of hypergeometric spectral curve. Uh, for, for this, so we have uh, the following. So first, so there is a formula relating um, our Boros coefficient and uh, topological recursion free energies. So basically, the Boros coefficients are obtained by some taking genus is genus. Genus zero, genus zero. Oh, this spectral curve is zero. So any other members in hypergeometric type spectral curve is also genus zero. So maybe this is, uh, okay, anyway, yeah. So there is a formula. And for genus zero spectral curve, so some simplification happens for, and uh, so actually, so for, for these examples, so we can describe the free energy very explicitly. And the result is written by, um, so this kind of BPS invariance of this form. Uh, or maybe I, it's better to write 2G, 2G, minus 2, B, 2G. Um, times omega gamma. Upper half plane, yeah. Upper half plane, yes, yes. Our uh, semi closed upper half plane, to be precise. Okay. Yeah, and here, so this holds when G is greater than or equal to 2. Um, and where so these notions, so gamma, C, om omega, are the BPS structure associated with our quadratic differential. So actually, so Lotta briefly explained yesterday. So by looking at the Stokes graph, so, uh, or, uh, so anyway, so, so the degeneration of the Stokes graph is corresponding to some. Right, so I'm sorry, because omega depends on point from the base or uh, here's no base at the system because it's only one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. zero. Just zero. So so actually, so this BPS structure is uncoupled. 
so there is no non-trivial uh, wall crossing of first kind is happening in this situation. So because genus of spectral curve is zero. So and this also simplifies the structure of the topological recursion free energy. So it's a basically some um, superposition of element wave uh, free energies by this count, uh, this weight. And here, uh, maybe to completeness, I explain. So this is a fast homology. And this Z is a central charge, so which is a home from gamma to C. And its exponent explicit form is the period integral of y dx. So our previous nu is nothing but a central charge in the Weber case. And omega is obtained by weighted counting. Weighted counting of subtle connections. Subtle connections. Um, so actually, so w if you consider some this kind of rational functions, then some compli complicated Stokes graph can appear. So for example, around the double pole, so you sometimes have this kind of degeneration around the double pole. And also, if you have some simple pole, so one Stokes curve emanates from a simple pole. And sometimes it hits another simple pole. So this can also happen in some member in the confluent family of the hypergeometry. Is it just one number or some of all? It depends on some parameters, like Omega infinity zero one. Uh, it's appearing in this central charge. Ah, ah, so it's function of three variables, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And it's kind of piecewise uh, uh, something or. Uh, uh, actually, so this is not piecewise. So it's a global. So because. Um, it's a holomorphic function. Yes, holomorphic function. Ah, uh, uh, away from some. Uh, some uh, it's it's it can appear and disappear from a plane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so actually, um, so we, when. Some central charge goes to some lower half plane, then the other appears. Yeah. appears but it is even number, so nothing happens. I see. I see. I see. I see. <laughs> anyway, um, and for, for, for these cases, so we have um, some BPS cycles. For, for example, what's, oh, oops. so saddle class in this case is a kind of generalization, so which encircles around the um, this saddle connection. And for this gamma, I assign minus one. And here, I assign equal four. Yeah. Actually, so Gaia to Manaiske discussed, uh, maybe I forgot to mention, uh, here. Yeah, yeah. And for this saddle connection, so Weber saddle connection is equal one. So this is defi also defi defined by Gaia to Manaiske. Yeah. So these are not appearing in Gaia to Manaiske's talk, but uh, for our example, so if we define this way, then we have some common expression. And actually, so this four is uh, later interpreted as some actual DT invariant by Fabian Hayden. Okay. Uh, how much time? Oh, I have only 20 minutes. <laughs> I have to be hurry. So, so this is uh, uh, some. Sorry? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so now I want to just move on a second. Part. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, so now we know the uh, relation in between WKB and topological recursion in genus zero case, but some non-trivial thing happens in genus one situation, and then panel equation appears. And uh, yeah, so this is what I want to discuss next. Sorry. So section three, um, section three must be some elliptic curve and the panel equation. Okay, so panel equation was explained by Philip yesterday, and uh, I study, or maybe I consider the first panel equation. And actually, so as, ex as is explained yesterday, so this is some analog or deformation of wire stress pair function. And for wire stress pair function, so you know there is a uh, um, so called sigma function, so which is essentially the theta function by this relation. So our pair function must be obtained by dz log sigma. So this says that so your pair function is meromorphic, but it is written by some 
ratio of some entire functions. And uh, there is some analog in panel based story. So this is the tau function. So which is by definition obtained by the same relation written right. So this is analog. Um, okay, so, main, so actually so my, my main motivation to study the topological recursion is coming from to understand the structure of Panel equation. And in 2019, I showed the following. Um, so to understand that, to construct some solution of the Panel equations, I apply the topological recursion to genus one spectral curve of this specific form. U, T, and U. And this T is eventually the independent variable of the Panel equation. And this U is obtained by the implicit function. So, it is a some uh, so this is two parameter family. So, T and new are parameter of this family of elliptic curve. And new is given by this relation. So, t to be precise, first we have to fix some trailing marking and uh, uh, impose this condition for our choosing A cycle. And for, for this case, so you can view this as some spectral curve in the previous sense by looking at the, by using the wireless trust parameterization, which parameterizing this elliptic curve and applying the topological recursion, so we get omega gn and fg. And in this case, so this is uh, not only the function of z1 to zn, it also contains t and nu, which are parameter of this spectral curve. And, uh, what I proved in 2019 is the following. So if you consider the discrete Fourier transform of 2 pi k low h bar, so low is some another variable uh, which appears in a discrete Fourier kernel. And I take the topological recursion partition function and discrete Fourier transform it by this new parameter, then this is a, a formal series valued um, tau function of first panel equation. So namely, uh, but, but maybe I forgot to mention. So in, in this story, so we have to be, we have to introduce h bar. Um, so here I consider h bar depending on the equation. Okay, so this happens. Okay. And uh, yeah, and actually, so I have to write se several remarks. So first of all, so this discrete Fourier transform was already studied by Marino and Enal. So this is I identical to the non-perturbative partition function. And uh, actually, so you can modify the order of the expansion. Um, so namely, so you can if, so expand this as a h bar series and take the discrete Fourier transform in term wise. Say the leading term is given by theta function. Other, other higher order terms are written by some um, de derivative of pro product of the theta functions. Um, so this explains this analog of tau function as a theta function in more deep level. Okay, so this is a nice formula from the viewpoint of some special functions. And also, I wanted to discuss or to try to use um, so this to study the some resurgence property um, yeah, later. But what, uh, what I will talk from now on is basically co conjectural. Um, so for example, so this is, so no, Borel summability is still not known rigorously, I think. Okay, but uh, I have several um, conjectures on this. Ah. So actually, so this formula is highly motivated by some formula proved by Gamma Yun, Yorgo, and Rizobi. So they construct the tau function of the Panel 6 equation by the discrete Fourier transform of um, conformal block, Pitasol conformal block. So this is some uh, topological recursion version of their formula. Okay. Um, and uh, 
Factor is a wide discrete Fourier transform is important. Uh, uh, sorry, maybe it's not uh, things that I'm going to talk. Um, okay, so I have some remark. Um, so actually, so as I said, um, so in this case, so TR quantization is different from a necklace of shatter quantization. So actually, so TR quantization uh, is not an ordinary differential equation. So it's a, you can write it as an ordinary differential equation, but it contains some h bar infinitely many collection terms. But um, using some variational formula in topological recursion, so you can uh, de describe the TR quantization as some Berabin Polyakov, the Molodoshkov type um, partial differential equation. So in this case, so topological recursion quantization of this elliptic curve gives you some partial differential equation. And applying the um, discrete Fourier transform, so you get um, WKB type solution of um, isomonodromy system. Associated with Pang River. Mm. So, as Philip explained yesterday, so every Pang River equation is related to isomonodromy deformation. And in the case, isomonodromy system corresponding to Pang River equation has some irregular singularity. Irregular singularity at x equal infinity. And Poincare rank is 5 over 2. So th this means it has some five um, stokes directions and five stokes multipliers, but, th but they satisfy some cyclic relation and two of them are independent. And these two are related to the um, uh, initial data to solve the second order Pan equation. Okay, so this is a very known story. Uh, anyway, but, but we can construct the fo solution, formal solution of the isomodromic system. Um, and there is some key observation. So, sorry, maybe I forgot to mention, so. Um, so, let me write down this um, WKB type solution of psi plus and minus. Uh, sorry, so this isomodromy system is, sorry, rank two system, so it has two independent WKB solutions. Um, and the key observation is, so if you consider the term-wise analytic continuation along A cycle or B cycle, then uh, you have this formal or term-wise monodromy relations. So first one is along A cycle, and the second one is along B cycle. Yeah. Hmm. So, so actually, so, so this is similar to the WKB solution. So it's uh, series in H bar, but coefficients are defined on some spectral curve which is multivalued because we are taking some primitive. So we can discuss the term-wise analytic continuation. And in this case, so you have this um, uh, um, term-wise monodromy, and this new and low are t-independent parameters. So this explains some kind of isomonodromy property of this topological recursion quantization plus discrete Fourier transform. Um, so from this viewpoint, so this exponential 2 pi new and low are related to the Borough symbols because it is obtained by some Arbelianized holonomy or monodromy. So from this observation, um, in the same paper in 2019, I discussed some conjectural resurgence property or not resurgence property, but some conjectures on some um, Borel summability. So from now on, I want to discuss three conjectures about the Borel summability or research property. Section maybe four. Conjectures on the topological recursion partition function associated with this um, elliptic curve. And I denote it by Qx in what follows. Okay. So first conjecture, so which I actually I proposed in my paper. Um, 
in section 5. So from several WKB theoretic viewpoints, our topological recursion partition function, T nu of h bar, is Borel sum of. So this is conjecture. If um, the Stokes graph of this um, quadratic differential, so which should be some, so this is some classical limit of our isomodromic system. Um, so this is, is, is saddle free. So this means there is no saddle connection. If there is no saddle connection in the Stokes graph, then this C should be Borel sum of So this is my conjecture. So in other words, um, the Borel singularity uh, included in the lattice new A new B, where um, new A new something is given by sorry. 2 pi i knew something is related given by the period integral of y dx. Okay, so, so this means new a is our original new, and new b is um, 2 pi i b cycle integral. And actually, so this is um, related to new derivative of itself by the survivability relation. Okay, so this is the first claim. Not the claim, but first um, conjecture. Oh. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I cannot find. And in the same paper, I also discussed the conjectural expression of the Stokes multipliers. Um, sorry, so this is the second contents of my conjecture one. Um, so actually, um, I also expect that the discrete Fourier transform converges under the same assumption. Um, and uh, the Stokes data of isomondromy system is written by or described by um, so these two parameters um, via Borov connection formula. Or um, Gaioto Moore Knight case path lifting. So let me explain what is this briefly. Um, where is it? So actually, in the exact WKB business, so if the Stokes graph is saddle free, um, then we can do, we can compute the monodromy or Stokes data by the Borov coefficient or Borov symbols. So in my notation, so exponential of Borov coefficient is called Borov symbol. And yeah, um, so here, this is a Stokes graph of our um, elliptic curve or cubic polynomial. Then it has three simple zeros in general. And I take A cycle and B cycle in this way. Um, so first, so this one is the A cycle and the other cycle is the B cycle. I guess it is intersecting um, x-axis. Okay, so uh, maybe opposite. I'm not sure. So uh, at this point, so a and b must be intersected, intersecting with sine plus one. Okay. Anyway, um, so for example, usual WKB solutions are Borel summable in each complement of this Stokes graph, and the adjacent WKB solutions are related by the Borel connection formula. So which roughly says, so if you consider the analytic continuation to the second region, uh, next region, then you have some collection terms. But this collection term is, is obtained by some term-wise analytic continuation to um, along some detoured path, which avoid this Stokes curve. And in the case, so detoured path, um, 
So this is the dead word pass. So if you normalize WKB solution from infinity, so this will be the dead word pass. And finally, you have some um, WKB solution in the second street, which is subdominant in this situation. And this, you can see that so this dead word pass can be deformed homotop homotopically to this A cycle. So this means that um, so you have exponential of 2 pi i nu, A cycle must appear uh, in the connection formula. So this is the Wolf connection formula, or a path lifting rule. So this is the Stokes data. Multiplier. So uh, again, so let me emphasize that. So since we are assuming some Borel summability and so on, so, so actually so this is conjectural. <laughs> Stokes multiplier. But we, we, we can compute the um, Stokes multiplier in the same recipe. So for example, in, in the case, so you see that in this case, the toward pass is related to the B cycle. So this 2 pi i rho over h bar appears in the Stokes constant, Stokes multipliers. And here, so you have, when you cross two Stokes curves, then you have to do this. Um, so this the toward business twice, then you have e to the, so first crossing is related to B cycle integral, so you have rho over h bar. And actually, so, uh, due to several technical reasons, so I, I, so minus sign appears, but in the end, so for this case, so you have, so the toward pass is transformed to A cycle plus B cycle, so you have two terms, um, nu plus rho over h bar. So anyway, so you have some explicit expression in terms of this A cycle and B cycle. Um, Term-wise formal monodromy, which I, I, I just write down in the above blackboard. Okay. And uh, so actually, so this is conjecture, as I said, but uh, the good news is so this is, uh, this is conjecture, but consistent with uh, several results, in particular, um, Kappaev's, sorry, Kitaev. Kitaev's uh, result on elliptic asymptotic. So he described the behavior, elliptic asymptotic behavior of the solution of the Pandeva equation by use, from the viewpoint of this corresponding Stokes data. And our formula recovers um, Kitaev's formula precisely. So this is the supporting evidence. And also, um, um, okay. in the last minute, I want to ex explain some conjectures. So, this, so, so, so this is uh, some discussion about the uh, um, Borel summability and uh, some uh, Stokes property on X plane. But I also want to understand the Stokes property or Lissajet's property for the topological recursion partition function, so which is not discussed so far. And for regarding all that, I wanted to propose some conjectures. But for, for the purpose, so first I want to assume that this condition, so new A over new B, uh, is not belonging to real number. So actually, so this is the condition for away from the wall of marginal stability. Um, so I just want to assume that um, new A and new B never be real simultaneously. Okay. So my second conjecture is, so if the real part of new A so which is nothing but the real part of new is zero. Then as I said, in this case, some Borel singularity can appear along the real axis. So this is bas uh, based on, for example, conjecture one. Then in that case, uh, then I expect that the corresponding jump of the Stokes automorphism of each Fourier component, in particular zero Fourier component of the tau function is given by just the same formula so this is the same formula which appeared in the beginning of my talk so namely so this so same as so jump property must be should be same as um, that Weber, partial function for the Weber spectral graph. And there is some supporting evidence, um, supporting evidence. So, so this is 
actually for rigorous the study. So this is work in progress with or like Rizobi. Uh, in a few years ago, so Rizobi and uh, his student Nagyuk uh, invent or uh, uh, yeah, th they give some method to compute the large T expansion of the uh, accessory parameter of the Hoyne equation. And th their method can be used in the computation of the topological recursion. So namely, so we can discuss some large T expansion of the um, free energy for um, appropriate choice of A cycle. Uh, we have some convergent series expansion of Fg, so which is um, given by 2g, 2g minus 2, b2g, 2g minus 2. So this appears in a leading term, and the higher order terms are also computed um, term by term, Fg of L. And actually, so we are obtaining some expansion, and this capital lambda is um, t to the power minus 5 over 4. So this is a large t expansion. And actually, so this coefficient are uh, exact, um, some explicit complex number. So more precisely, so this can be written as some fourth order root of six and some rational numbers. Anyway, so this is new independence, so a genuine constant. And you see, so this leading term is nothing but the Weber equation, sorry, free energy of the Weber curve. So usually, so, um, so this condition is um, imposed in solving the holomorphic anomaly equation. So this is the gap condition, conifold gap condition. But we can check that this topological recursion of free energy to satisfy. Fourth root of six. Fourth root of six, yes. And uh, yeah, so from this uh, picture, so you can see that, so if you consider the generating function of Fg, then so this says that uh, if the expansion in t, so degree of t becomes larger than h bar degrees, um, I don't know how to say it in English, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so the higher order coefficient in large t expansion is a polynomial in h bar, even when we the free energy. So non borel summable part is here. So, this ex, uh, so from this expression, I expect that the topological recursion partition function Stokes jump of the topological recursion partition function is the same as the Weber's jump. And finally, I want to mention about the relation between cluster transformations, which I write in my abstract. Um, oh, sorry, it's out of the time, but I will finish soon. Okay. Um, uh, but maybe also I, I wanted to give some comment on this, this part. So I said uh, there is some appropriate choice of the A cycle. So this means that, um, so in, in general, so we have uh, three simple ramification points. And I, when t tends to infinity, um, so, um, um, after some rescaling, so this um, must be in this way, so namely, um, so when t tends to large, so y dx tends to large, so to keep um, to keep our parameter new to constant, so a cycle must shrink to a point. So this is some idea. So when we when we take this a cycle, then or a cycle ma is uh, in uh, vanishing cycle in some sense, uh, and it, that choice allows us to compute this large t expansion. And uh, the final comment is uh, where? Oh yeah, this one. Sorry. So this agrees with cluster transformation. So uh, what I mean is the following. So conjecture two implies that, okay, so our tau function t nu rho of h bar, so which was obtained by the discrete Fourier transform of this um, partition function, topological recursion partition function. So if you do the discrete Fourier transform of this guy, then we have to shift to the new by k times h bar. And here you see, so this is periodic, so it is invariant under the shift. And this is also again invariant under the shift. And this part is modified by 
uh, this way. And you have to multiply the Fourier kernel in the both sides and take the summation. Then you see that the Stokes automorphism, action of the Stokes automorphism must be 2 pi i times Li2 in the exponential. And uh, the function of the pan level 1, t nu rho tilde with um, um, yeah. So our discrete Fourier kernel should be modified by this relation, and this is nothing but the Delabare Dillinger firm's formula or cluster transformation. And this agrees, also agrees with the uh, mutation of the Stokes graph. Um, uh, maybe it's better to use more bigger board. Sorry. Uh, I don't know. Maybe first I move this one. Okay. So as I said, so this kind of um, Nonlinear, nonlinear, oh, sorry, um, mutation was Stokes phenomena in the sorry. sorry, maybe I can use. <laughs> sorry. Um, so actually, so I, as I said, so this is related to the or non borel summability or Stokes jump is related to some uh, subtle connections. Oh, sorry. Maybe it's broken? Likase, it's broken. Okay, so I can, okay. <laughs> Maybe you can hear, sorry, for the in inconvenience. Um, okay, so so if some uh, A cycle period becomes some real, then this kind of Stokes segment appears, or subtle connection appears. Uh, before and after that, um, your Stokes graph mutates, which means that the topology of the Stokes graph changes discontinuously. Um, and uh, then if you compare the Stokes multipliers, uh, multipliers in this direction and in this direction, so both of them are the same because nothing happens uh, around these Stokes curves. But here, um, so in our previous discussion, so both connection formula gives you this Stokes curve, and here, so you have two terms, as I said. And if you plug it in, uh, or if you factorize this, so you have um, the right-hand side of this formula. So these Stokes data are related to invariant or fast integrals of the Pandover equation. And so this relation should be related to the nonlinear Stokes phenomenon for the Pandover equation. And it agrees with uh, our conjectures and uh, our previous work, Wagai Otomanai's case work. Um, so actually, so this, pre so my, my main message is, so this exponential new and low should be some um, cluster coordinate. Okay, sorry for the overtime. Uh, I stop here, thank you. Yeah, so in this conjecture, there is the B, the B period doesn't appear in this. Um, um, can I have five more minutes? <laughs> 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 okay, maybe I can I can roughly say I can say Lafat. So we can do the similar game in B cycle. It's just a question of yes or no. Just I understand correctly. I mean, this CT new, and in this theory you have two periods A and B, right? Yes. Yes. So you are telling me that in your stores discontinuity formula, the B period doesn't appear on. New is new A, I guess. New is new A, yes, yes. yes. Okay. In this case. Okay, what? so this means that there are no singularities apart from the singularities at new A. Uh, uh, because I'm assuming uh, new A and new B is, um, not, uh, they do not have the same phase. So when new B becomes real, then may, we can do a similar game. So we can discuss the nonlinear Stokes phenomenon by mutation. Then, um, but you know, okay. for a given for a given value of the, of the model of the curve, the similarities are where they are, right? So you are you are you are uh, um, tuning the the model of your curve so that there are no singularities at new b, right? 
I believe newbie is also a singularity. Um, newbie is a singularity, yeah? Oh, yeah, newbie should be singularity of this set TL, or it's a Borel transform. And I'm not discussing the uh, stocks jump coming from the newbie. Yeah. Ah, OK, you are just saying, OK. Yeah. OK. Did you try to compare Ricardo's Schiappa have something about Pelleve? Ah, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention, yeah. So Ricardo also studies, uh, yeah, I think, so for example, um, um, so at least what, what I can say is, so this large T expansion business allows us to relate our discrete Fourier transform two-parameter solution with their transit, two-parameter transit solution. So, so at least we can observe the coefficients are similar. And regarding on the Stokes jump, so I have to compare. Um, so actually, so this is, uh, so we are discussing some Stokes phenomena for A period, but I guess so they are, discuss they are discussing some B period Stokes jumps. And I think, yeah, it's comparable. Um, but sorry, I don't have time to explain. <laughs> This Nikrasov-Shukashvili story has nothing to do with it. Uh, at this picture. Um, but recently, um, so Kento also got introduced some notion of beta deformation of the topological recursion. And he also find some um, some recursion relation related to some nikrasov shatashvili limit, so he, which he called Q-top recursion. Um, I think it is related, but, but at least in this picture, so there is no nikrasov shatashvili in part of the case. Thanks, speaker, again. Thank you. Thank you.